Hi, folks. For the rest of this week, we are going to spend a little time doing an introduction to acids and bases, and then we're going to spend more time on it next week. But this is a big topic, so we're going to spend quite a bit of time spread out over a variety of weeks. Acids and bases are two big, broad categories of chemicals, and these are very, very common. Everything from soda pop to soap to common medications, um, a lot of the things that we eat and drink and cook with are acids and bases. These are such big categories of chemicals that we just work with them all the time. Very important in healthcare, very important in life in general. So they're fun to talk about, lots of different applications. And we've been talking about solutions in water. Many of the acids and bases you encounter on a daily basis are watery solutions. Now, some acids and bases are very strong, very concentrated, and very dangerous. Some, of course, are very weak, harmless, and downright tasty. So there's a broad collection of chemistry here. And we're going to start with a definition. In the late 1800s, there was a Swedish chemist, and I apologize to all of those who speak a Swedish. Um, he, I apologize for my pronunciation. I believe the pronunciation is Svant Arrhenius. And Svant Arrhenius's definition of an acid was, an acid is a compound that increases the concentration of hydrogen ions in an aqueous solution. So the Arrhenius definition of an acid is something that makes more hydrogen ions in solution. Many acids are simple compounds that just release hydrogen cations, because remember, that's, I'm positive it's a cat, um, in a solution. And this, of course, is svant. Now, properties of acids, a lot of the things that you and I taste that tend to have a little bit of that sour tang are acidic, vinegary sort of things, pickles and pickled onions and, and olives and anything that's pickled that has that sort of a sour tang to it, that is an acidic solution. Citrus fruits, oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruits, all acidic. Tomatoes, tomato juice, apples, apple juice, all of those are acidic. The human mouth likes that taste, and so we are attracted to things with that sort of a tangy, sour taste. Coffee is acidic. All soda pop is a form of carbonic acid. So Coca-Cola, um, 7-Up, Mountain Dew, all of those things slightly acidic. Something as simple as aspirin is really acetosalicylic acid. Milk you might not think that fresh milk is acidic, but that's one of the reasons it's tasty and refreshing. Even fresh, non-spoiled milk is slightly acidic. And so if you taste an acid, an edible acid, it has a slightly sour taste to it. Acids have a pH less than 7. Now we're going to talk about pH through our, our discussion of acids and bases. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Neutral is 7. So 7 is a neutral solution. Anything with a pH that is lower than 7 is an acid. And I like this image because it kind of starts giving you an idea of different strengths of acids. Milk has a pH close to about 6. Black coffee, a little bit more acidic, about five. Tomato juice, about a four. Apple juice, about a three. Amazingly enough, apple juice can be more acidic than tomato juice. Lemon juice, more talking the concentrated stuff here, not lemon water. Lemon juice, very strong, a pH of about two. And when we say gastric acid, this is the hydrochloric acid solution in your stomach that helps that digestion process of your food. So acids have pHs between 0 up to 7. 
A litmus paper is one of the many indicators that is used to distinguish an acid from a base. And litmus paper comes in two forms. There is blue and there is pink litmus. If you are dealing with an, an acid, blue litmus paper turns pink in an acid solution. So litmus paper is an organic compound, this litmus. It is a, a plant-based chemical and it has been extracted and put on a little piece of paper and it has a nice color change that is easy to identify what is acidic and what is basic. Another common property of acids is they tend to react with metals to form hydrogen gas. When we were talking about chemical reactions, one of the reactions we described was zinc reacting with hydro hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. And the hydrogen gas bubbles were released. And this is a really fun, nice chemical reaction, but releasing hydrogen gas when a metal reacts with an acid, common property of acids. Another reaction of a metal reacting with an acid is in a lead acid storage battery. Your automobile battery um, contains sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is commonly used in car batteries. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4, and that sulfuric acid reacts with the lead plates inside of the car battery and that is part of the electrical power production. Now, these batteries, some are sealed, so they're fully sealed and there's nothing that escapes. Old-fashioned batteries, sometimes I have a slightly different construction and hydrogen gas was emitted. Challenge many years ago is if someone was smoking while they were messing around with their battery, hydrogen gas would ignite and it would be a fire hazard. Because of the fact that batteries often contain an acid, these common little AA, AAA batteries that you and I have in our home appliances, if the little cell or can ruptures that contains all of the chemicals, what comes out is an acid solution. And that acid solution, if it would dribble into the appliance we're using, whether it's our remote control or our cordless keyboard or whatever, it possibly could damage that and you might have something ruined. So it's always a good idea to remove batteries from any appliance that you are not currently using. I personally have lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars of electronics because of not doing this. So I'm trying to save you from my folly and my foolishness. Acids can be corrosive to metal because they react with metal. Now, this can be very attractive and can be used to etch things and make metals very beautiful, but it also can damage metal. So if you have acids, please keep them away from metals unless you want them to do harm to them. Acids can dehydrate. Now, dehydrate means to remove water. One of the things that is kind of fun is if you ever look at products for your hair that are sleeking and shining products, products to actually make your hair less fluffy, um, very often these things are slightly acidic, not terribly acidic, but slightly acidic. And the normal hair is made up of all of these different plates of keratin, which is a kind of protein. And if you have a slightly acidic product that you're using as a hair conditioner or a, a finishing product, what it will do, it will help dehydrate it, close down these sheaths of keratin, and your hair is going to be smoother looking and not as highly fluffy and porous. So acids are very, very good at removing water. Um, the opposite of this is if you go out on a humid day and your hair has a tendency to get all crazy frizzy because your hair absorbs water or gets hydrated. 
So the dehydrating product is a good thing. The reason I have a picture of vinegar here is back in the olden days before you could buy dehydrating products. Um, friends of mine would take like a gallon jug and put a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of vinegar, like a teaspoonful of water in a gallon jug of water, and they would use this as a finishing rinse on their hair. And it was just one of the things they did in an attempt to smooth out their hair. I'm going to find a video to show you of this chemical reaction. If you take sugar, plain old ordinary table sugar, and using sulfuric acid as a catalyst, the sulfuric acid will actually dehydrate the sugar. So when the sugar is dehydrated, the, that means the water is removed. If you take a look at the sugar molecule, it's made of carbon, carbon, and water. Well, what happens is the sulfuric acid causes the water molecules to evaporate away as H2O gas and leaves behind this big, ugly, nasty lump of carbon. And uh, it's a pretty amazing little chemical reaction. I'll find a video on YouTube and I'll throw it in the course for you to watch. Now, I'm going to show you a couple pictures here next of some skin that's been hit with sulfuric acid and strong acids. Just a little bit of a warning. They're not too gross because I personally don't like anything too gross, but they're kind of icky. Properties of acids, they can be corrosive to skin and fabric. If you ever mess around with acid, uh, playing with the, the car battery and you get acid on your shorts or your jeans, yep, they're going to eat right through your clothing. The same sort of thing. Um, clothing is made of a combination of hydrocarbons. They will get dehydrated and that will break down the fibers in the cloth and you're going to end up with holes in your clothing. This can also happen if Remember, your body is made of hydrocarbons. This can happen to your skin as well. So for strong acids, please respect these chemicals. They can be quite nasty and terrible. And there are evil, evil people out there on planet Earth. I wish there weren't, but they exist. Sick, evil people who engage in acid attacks. And this is um, some pictures of a British model named Katie Piper. Uh, Katie was stalked by a gentleman that she had dated. He actually attacked her with acid, and this is before um, and then after. She's been through over 250 operations after an acid attack um, with sulfuric acid. So respect the chemistry. These can be terrible things. And um, oh, so it's just, I want you to understand that these can be some pretty wicked, wicked chemicals. All right, my friends. We will come back later and we're going to talk about next time some important